Today on Name Grace, we've got a really great episode for you. We're in Glen Rose, Texas, and we're going to go check out the Creation Evidence Museum. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell his story about his world. I'm Jim Scudder Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. We have a great episode for you today. We're in Glen Rose, Texas. We're going to the Creation Evidence Museum and we're going to visit with my wonderful dear friend, Dr. Carl Baugh. Dr. Baugh has so much knowledge about just so many things, a creation, uh, paleontology. He's discovered 20 dinosaur bones. He's also done archaeology in Israel. But today we're just going to go through his museum and let you see it for yourself. And then maybe one day you can come here yourself too, Glen Rose. Enjoy today's In Grace. Everything about the creation tells an amazing story of God's design and our destroying that design, but God's grace entering with the gospel. And the gospel is absolute grace. And the gospel is every, on, on every episode of In Grace, we're called grace. We, we are saved by grace. Abs kept we're, by grace. We serve in grace. So, you know, grace is central to the scriptures yes. and, and hopefully central to our lives. Yeah, and, and to our lives. This is a very important life-size replica from Cookville, Tennessee. Pastor, there's actually a forest of these polystrate trees. Now we call them trees, that's a general terminology. It's actually lepidodendron, that's lycopsid club moss that today gets that tall, but you can see it got much, much taller. So back pre-flood, you yeah. would have a, a moss that looks like the size of a tree. Yes. Wow. Yes. And, and when you say polystrate, you're talking about something that pierces through different strata of layers. It appears to pierce through different strata. Poly means many, uh -huh. different. Uh, straight means stratum, layers. But you can see this runs through scores of layers. Actually, the layers were laid down after it was in place. And according to evolutionary theory, over five million years of evolutionary time passed while it was in place. That's impossible. That would be quite impossible. Yes. This right here, if we didn't see anything else in your fine museum, this right here destroys evolution. It literally destroys evolution because according to evolutionary theory, two inches equal 500,000 years of evolutionary sediment. Therefore, the evolutionary community has completely redefined uh, natural circumstances, science. Mm -hmm. If it has any implication of having a designer and especially a person doing the design, by the new regulations and, and new definition, it is not science at all. Right, well, the rejecting, it is, the rejecting, it is uh, absolutely all of the major discoveries of all, all the technology that we have were discovered by people that believed in God, people, people that believed in creation. Yes. And all the major scientific disciplines right. were established, like Linnaeus mm -hmm. established that discipline, and they were creationists who believed in the Bible. Right. So it's been hijacked mid-flight. Yeah. I think it's most interesting to notice that this, this coal, according to evolutionary theory, requires from 50 to 400 million years to form. Uh, if you were to Google University of New York, University of Moscow, University of uh, Australia, uh, any major university, University of Texas, etc., how do you explain the existence of coal? Very quickly, they say there has to be cellulose plant material that falls in water, but the water has to be acidic. It has to be under the surface of the water, otherwise it'll rot or biodegrade. It has to fall in... Uh, acidic water next to clay, and to get these conditions, when you have thousands, sometimes thousands of miles of shelves of coal, hundreds of feet deep or thick, 
Each tree, each plant has to fall just right. So that would consume 50 to 400 million years. So you have to have cellulose material falling in acidic waters adjacent to clay, building up pressure. Then you have volcanism that generates tremendous heat. And Argonne National Laboratory put this to the test. They had a cylinder, and that's one of the world's great laboratories near Chicago. They took cellulose plant material, sprinkled clay, added acidic waters, added a cylinder with pressure, and then added heat. In three weeks, coal began to form. Hmm. But I want you to see something. You see those little instruments? Yes. We have cylinders where we uh, drop the cellulose plant material, we sprinkle clay, we uh, add acidic waters, we have a weight system to add pressure, we add heat. And then we learned that this coal has positive, negative, positive, negative implications throughout the whole thing. So there had to be lightning strikes. Hmm. We add DC current. In three hours, we begin to produce coal. Right here. Right here. In these devices. In these devices. Well, come on, show me that now. Because <laughs> you, you, you just keep showing me something oh, new. Oh, yes. I've never Welcome seen home. Before. You see the, the cylinder. Right. And you add weights. We add weights. And we have a platform here so we can add the heat temperature. And we have an external device in my office uh, that generates sparks of DC electrical current. And within three hours, we begin to form coal. Wow, that is really cool. So it does not take five million years huh. for that polystrate fossil. We use all the parameters described by the long age scenario, 50 million to 400 million. And they assume that because of the tremendous volume right. of this material. But it was our guys who added the final touch realizing that in much of the coal it's positive negative positive negative and very fine thin layers that means there had to be lightning strokes and psalm 77 describes a flood passage where during the flood the lightning was so intense that it not only saturated the waters but it reached out into the heavens the lightning psalm 77 that old book has all the answers. It does. It is scientific. Pastor, this is what makes it work. You are viewing the bones that we've excavated in Colorado and elsewhere, and you're seeing them as we find them in the ground and are able to jacket them and get them out. And this has been a real treat to be able to see the fossil preparation. And you've got to come to see the Creation Evidence Museum. You need to meet Dr. Carl Ball and his great staff and see the evidence. So much evidence for creation. And all of it is to glorify the Creator Himself and to demonstrate that what He said in His Word is literally true. I would love to get into your hands some great creation resources. Irrefutable Creation Evidence is a DVD that features Dr. Carl Ball's museum in Glen Rose, Texas, and I'll send that to you for a gift of any amount. If your gift is $25 or more, let me send you Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. And if your gift is $35 or more, let me also send you Fossil Fishing. And right now, every gift you give to In Grace, more people hear the gospel, and your gift is going to be doubled. Join In Grace's matching gift campaign. All gifts given this week will be doubled. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or visit our website at ingrace.tv. This uh, has been uh, reconstructed with, uh, we have NASA engineers who actually did this carving for us, fabricated the windows for us, and inside we simulate, we're in the process of simulating the conditions before the worldwide flood. Now, in one minute, what are those conditions? Uh, first of all, we know we had greater atmospheric pressure, that's hyperbaric pressure. 
We know we had higher oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. We know we had greater electromagnetic energy. We know we had primary filtration of ultraviolet, not all the filtration, but primary filtration. It's the ultraviolet that generates free radicals today. We know we had uh, uniform temperatures. We know we had uh, a relatively constant humidity range. Put all of these together, we have an academic base for simulating. I, I'm excited about this thing, I really am. So am I. This, I've been working on this 40 years, and I hold three patents on it. And the purpose of it is not to make a set of money, but to demonstrate that God and His work were done right. <laughs>Pastor over in the corner is the field generator, a one-of-a-kind instrument that was made in Detroit for us mm. to generate the correct field, electromagnetic field, DC pulse current, to be transferred into the biosphere. This was made by Mr. Ron Pugh and his engineers. Well, this is, this is very complicated, and you're, you have one-of-a-kind equipment going into this. Correct. Fascinating. And this weighs 92,000 pounds, it is 64 feet long. Now, uh, this is 48 feet long. It overlaps the whole thing. That's a 14 foot chamber. It's 64 feet long, but part of that is an overlap because of the hyperbolic. The hyperbolic nature of this adds to the ability for the sound to be simulation of what we had before the flood because we had greater atmospheric pressure and we will have greater atmospheric pressure here as well. But here you're able to stay on key a little better, or I can at least, and I don't dare sing outside here. Notice we have the huge coil, 30 feet long. It has 4,000 wraps of number six solid copper insulated wiring. Those 4,000 wraps are very important. This is the line transferring the electromagnetic energy from the generator, field generator, that's electromagnetic field generator, into here. But this field will uh, simulate the pre-flood world. Correct. The energy, we know that the Earth's magnetic field is decreasing exponentially. So this will, now notice it is off-center. That's deliberately designed so that we can monitor the preference of the plants in these hydroponic trays, the plants dangling from uh, these hanging structures, we'll be able to determine and actually see if they favor a stronger field or prefer to be away from it. That'll be interesting. Very interesting. And you'll have plants, and I assume you'll have other creatures in here. We'll have all of the basic life forms. We'll have insects, we'll have mammals, we'll have avians, we'll have reptiles. And we have a 20 inch alcove in each end. And then we have a barrier so that we will know if some prefer to naturally nest in those areas or hang out in those areas. So will these, some of these creatures be able to roam free in here? They'll all be able to roam free, wow. it, except the rattlesnakes. Yeah, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> what a privilege this is to come inside such a one-of-a-kind and unique. Well, experience. and again, I want to emphasize we'll have at least four cameras. We will have microphones 24-7. You can watch the experiments being run. We will have gauges where uh, you can actually see the growth rate. We'll have monitors and we'll re-explain that again and again because a number of classes worldwide will uh, watch this, will monitor this, will make reports on it in their biology classes. This is cool. One of my favorite parts of your museum is this arc. Now, I've seen a larger arc in Kentucky. Surely. But it's you. not made out of mahogany. And it doesn't have some of these details and elements because you've been able to research the arc. You've actually gone to Mount Ararat, Correct. Dr. Ball. And you're bringing back some things that very few people even know about. All right. Uh, God told Noah, build the ark of gopher wood. Now, of course, it had to be constructed of wood. That's, that's very clear. We've been searching for generations to try to find what gopher wood might be. But none of them 
totally qualify, or in a sense, they all qualify, because when we look at the Hebrew, the word gopher is not a species or variety of wood at all. The word wood is already there. The word gopher means, in the Hebrew, to house in. It's an engineering technique. And when you use that as an adjective to wood, it's an engineering technique to house in wood and make it one structure. So we're talking about gophered wood. Gophered wood, that's so, right. So which is, you're saying to house in or to interlaminate. You're exactly right. It means to house in with a structural interlamination, meaning that component is laminated to that component and that component so that component is laminated to that component and that component. So now you have something that is so strong, it's all one piece. That component laminated to everything and that component, it is one piece. Interlocked would be another way to term it. Interlocked now, and interlaminated. Now what is the scale of this model? This is 1 20th scale, okay. 25 feet long. And is this the gopher technique? Did, did you do that technique with building this? We use this with the gopher technique so that the hull is structurally interlaminated with the bulkheads, the room dividers. God told Noah, build rooms in the ark. That was early in the conversation. In the Hebrew, first mention is dominant. That means that these room dividers had to be dominant. We call those bulkheads. So the bulkheads are structurally interlaminated with the hull and with each of the three levels and with the deck itself. Then you also have a, a little neat little way of maybe distributing the water uh, with piping and they would have just had to draw the water up to this point, pour it in here and it could have watered all the animals from one place. Uh, uh, yes, when you consider there were either four or six of these from just one spot, one of the men on the ark could water animals in a large area of the ark. But pastor, here's something that I think is incredibly important. We normally think, okay, pitch it within and without. So we're thinking rub tar all over the thing. Rub tar. But there's a problem with that. A real problem. Tar because would be a result of the flood. Uh, Post-flood, a right. result of the right. flood. Aren't you glad God didn't wait till after the flood to tell Noah to build the ark? <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So, so we're not talking about a petrochemical uh, coating. We're talking about something else. To saturate every pore, every structure, every bit of the structure. It has to be a hydrocarbon, has to be a natural hydrocarbon, so that's resin. It isn't the birch sap that is used. The birch sap has to do with uh, genetic expression. It's the birch bark resin. The two are different. Birch bark resin is picked up from the ingredients of the soil, and if those soils have enough metals or particular chemicals, then the birch bark resin becomes semiconductive to conductive. Huh. Pastor, that solves a major problem. Psalm 77 states that during the flood, the electromagnetic DC current lightning strokes were so intense that they went out into the heavens. So, so that would mean that this vessel would have to have been hit by lightning. Oh, it had to be so hit by lightning. So what would protect the animals and the people on board? If you build it like God said to do it. We need to learn to do it like God says to it. <laughs> so many times. If so many we ways. build it like God says, within and without, all of that structure is saturated with that semiconductive to conductive material. So is this. It forms a Faraday cage. So now all of a sudden, every occupant is protected and that electricity will go down around and it not It shunts hurt. around and out the other end and the only safe place is within. The only safe place around the ark was inside the ark. And the only safe place for the real ark is being in Jesus Christ mm. and having him in us. Well, we've been talking today about creation and we've also talked about the flood. The flood is a sign of God's judgment. Creation was created perfect and we messed it up, we've sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there's hope, 
And that's how we always like to end our program. Now listen to me very carefully. Your works, your religion, your good deeds cannot save you. It's good, but we cannot do enough. As a matter of fact, the Bible says our best efforts, our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of a holy God. Therefore, we're in big trouble. There's two places the Bible says that we would go after death. One is heaven, one is hell. Hell is an eternal lake of fire. Heaven isn't just floating on a cloud playing a harp. Heaven is being with God forever in a real world, a restored world, the way it used to be. Where do you want to go? Well, if you don't receive the gift of eternal life, which God has made on your behalf, he's presenting it to you, then you will not go to heaven, you will go to hell. But my friend, here on In Grace, we talk about grace so much because God is gracious, God is love. He sent his son, his name is Jesus. He died for you on a cross and he rose again. And if you will simply just believe in him, you say, it can't be that simple. What does the Bible say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is that simple. As a matter of fact, it's the only way it could be. It's not cheap for it took the death of God himself. Trust Jesus Christ today and you will be saved forever. I would love to get into your hands some great creation resources. Irrefutable Creation Evidence is a DVD that features Dr. Carl Ball's museum in Glen Rose, Texas, and I'll send that to you for a gift of any amount. If your gift is $25 or more, let me send you Dinosaurs That Destroy Evolution. And if your gift is $35 or more, let me also send you Fossil Fishing. And right now, every gift you give to In Grace, more people hear the gospel, and your gift is going to be doubled. Join In Grace's matching gift campaign. All gifts given this week will be doubled. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or visit our website at ingrace.tv. Join us next week for part three of Irrefutable Creation Evidence. The first thing you see when you walk in is this wall. Yes. And it's the wall of truth. Pastor, if the information on this wall is correct, evolution is vanquished. Absolutely. Now, its proponents may not realize that, but I hope every person watching the program today will realize the import of what you've come to point out. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.